Oh, praise the Lord. I just want us to pray for about five minutes. I want you to say this after me. He died for my sins to be washed away. He resurrected for me to receive a new life. And his ascension gave me the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, I just want you to bow down your head and pray that God let your power come upon me. This day is the day that Christ ascend into the heaven. There are a whole lot of mysteries in regard of him going. The principalities and powers of darkness he overcame and make a public show of them so that you and I the demons cannot threaten you anymore. They can make noise but they cannot physically touch you anymore because of what Christ did. Oh hallelujah. I wanted to pray, thank him and bless the holy name of God and ask him to endow upon you his anointing. Lift up your voice and let us begin to pray. Heaven Father, this is the day God you ascended into the heavens because of the accomplished work you did on the cross. Our sins was washed away. We are granted a new lease of life. And above all, your ascension or oh, release the power of God upon our lives that we can contend and overcome the ways of the enemy. Father, we bless you. Lord, we glorify you. We magnify your holy name. Be that exalted and be that magnified. Who is like unto thee? That was now. We worship you, Lord. Oh, Riakabaya no Sanderianda. Amama Yeba Sodi. Oh, Riaraba Sokata. Just wave your hands and thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Le bako se bako tabale, rado si kabota yila no sakabale. Ariana Maso, mighty God, we worship you. Mm, thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. My Jesus, Allah. Oh, I know, I know. That thou art my life. <clears throat> For thee, Father, we magnify you, Lord. Know. I
are our you are our savior you are our precious redeemer without you we are nothing for your love you have for us you left your heavenly estate to come and die for us so that you can restore and revive us and empower us our Jesus you are ours it is now my Savior If ever, oh, I love you, Lord, it is time to hear from you. We pray that you brew upon this atmosphere your spirit of life. And open our ears and heart to hear thy infallible word which is able to save our soul. I present myself before that room of grace that you use me as a vessel sanctified for every good use for you. Let your word come forth in power and let your name be that exalted. This we pray and shall we all say a big amen. Oh give a clap offering unto Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hmm. Today's word, oh my goodness. I pray that you take your pen and paper and write something down. The knowledge the Lord is given to us in these last days showing us his will and his purpose as we learned last week there are cultures there are things we have incorporated into our life that are contradicting the word of God but because that my tribe in Ghana we say amamre any amania we stick to those things and we forget that we are just about 150 years as a group of people that have been formed now or in terms of nation. But the Bible has been in existence over thousands of years. And yet still we say our culture supersedes the word of God. Doesn't make any sense. And this is the dilemma the church is facing Believers are encountering because back home or in our houses or among our tribes and our people, the culture is taking ascendancy. Oh, hallelujah. You come to the nations. The nations are saying that they are liberated, they are free, they are free thinking, they are, what do they call it, progressive. How can something be progressive that is taking you back to the things that are not what God is commanding you. Oh, hallelujah. The actual progressive is about the word of God. That takes you from one degree of glory to another. Line upon line, precept upon precepts. But Christians, we are allowing all these things to go on. And at the same time, we claim to know God. How can you know God? And something is placed above your God. Whom you worship. This is the reason, like I said last week, when the, the word of God said, call me in times of trouble and I will answer. When you read that Isaiah 54 verse 19, he said that no weapon that will function. But at the end, he said, this is the inheritance of the servants of God. But actually, many of us are serving the nations we are serving a group of people. We are serving our culture. And above all, we are selling ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. 
And as a result, the word of God, which Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 declare, where the word of the king is, there is what? Power. It's no more effective in our life. All because we have rejected the word of God. The scripture says, the word of God that you have rejected, what wisdom do you have? We learned last week from Psalm 86 verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. He said, teach me your way to walk in your truth. Oh, how I wish if we Christians... This will, be, this will be our declaration as the psalmist was saying Lord teach me your way let me walk in your truth we are saying we are progressive we are in the modern world so God we don't need your truth anymore oh hallelujah if we don't know the truth or you have not been taught of the ways of God by the end of this message you will, you will come to a realization that you need to be taught the ways of God if you don't bring yourself to be taught the ways of God, you can never walk with God. Because we are basing our system on when we were born. But when you were born, you were born a sinner. You were not born righteous. Oh, Mary Bosi. I say you were born what? A sinner. You were nobody was born righteous. The only person that was born righteous, the only two persons that were born righteous were Adam and Eve. The rest of mankind were all born sinners. And there is something that you need to do to change that birthright of sin in your life. In order for you to be able to obey the word of God. The reason why we cannot obey the word of God is that something happened in the garden. Something did what? Happen in the garden. We were born or we were created to live forever in the presence of God. What causes God to cast us away from his presence? Shall we read Genesis chapter 3? Let me bring you to that realization. Instead of we, our interest is not based on prosperity, selfish desires, and kill my enemy. That I become the prayer of believers. We won't say to God, God teach me your way for me to walk in your truth. That is a secondary matter. That is when we go to church. That is the pastor's issue. That is not my issue. I, I'm in the world. I need to get prosperity in the world. Oh, Bible says that we shall be prosperous. He gives us power to get wealth. What about you obeying his truth? Oh, hallelujah. Your words is your belief system. Whatever words that are proceeding out of your mouth that you are declaring, oh, I'm a woman, I'm a man, I'm, a, I'm this, all these things. Oh, I won't obey my parents anymore. In a modern world, because somebody stupidly told you that you are 18 years, you are on yourself, right? What do you know in 18 years? What do you know 18 years in this life? Let me break it down for you. By the time you are 12 years, now that you begin to think, right? So by the time you are 18 years, you have spent actual, as a matter of fact, you are thinking process from 16 years going that it became a little bit mature. So your lifetime at the age of 18 years is that you have spent just two years getting to know the little things of this world. And somebody have told you, you are better than your parents. And you are believing that. Somebody also have told you that now you are, you are at your mother's age, you are 60, you are 70, you don't have to respect your parents anymore. It's a vice versa. And we are believing all these things into our life. Something happened that has opened this door for us to think that way. The Bible declares in Proverbs 18, 21 that life and death is in the power of your tongue. Because forever, God's word is settled in heaven. Whatever that you say that contradicts the word of God, according to Jesus, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30 says, you will give account. Whatever word that proceeds out of your mouth, you are going to give account. You cannot avoid that. You cannot escape that. You are going to give account. So be careful what belief system you are building in your life. You are sitting in churches. You call yourself a pastor. You call yourself a man or woman of God. 
But your belief system is not the word of God. You have a problem. Because God, a certain day, is going to answer you. In Genesis chapter Genesis, shall we go to Genesis quickly? Genesis chapter 3. I want to show you verse 6 and 7. Something happened in the garden. We have lost something. This is why Jesus came. Let me tell you, the sin is to to right the wrong in order for you to become who you are. Right now, if you are coming to this entrance, and somebody has put a blockade or something happened that this entrance is blocked you cannot access what do you do first you remove the thing that are in the what in the entrance in order for you to assess the things here so that is how the sin nature was the sin nature was blocking what the entrance for you to come into the presence of god so the first thing god did is dying so that he can remove the sin nature that is not the ultimate. It's the starting point. But after the door, the entrance has been removed, you need to come in to assess the things that are here. And this is why Jesus came. But many of us are focusing only on the entrance, the remover of the, of the stone that were blocking the entrance. Oh, his blood has forgiven me. So that's it. We don't go further. But there is more to the story. There is more concerning you becoming a believer. Until you move to that level who you were in Adam before the sin you cannot assess or talk to God. Oh hallelujah. That's why many people are chasing fake pastors. That's why you are paying money for the pastor to, pa to fast for you. That's why you are asking the, the pastors to do something. Meanwhile, you have access to God. The only difference is that the link that creates the access to God, you have not accessed it. And that's why I'm here this afternoon to give you this nugget of truth in order for you to be able to get to know your God. So when the woman, Genesis 3, 6, 7, so when the woman saw that, the tree was good for food that it was pleasant to the eyes and tree desirable to make one wise she took off his fruit and ate she also gave to her husband with her and he ate verse 7 then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew they were naked and they sewed fig trees together and made themselves a covering Bible says that if saw the tree, he took the fruit and it was pleasant to the eyes. He gave to the husband, both of them ate. But the Bible declares that after eating the fruit, their eyes were open. My question to everybody, those on the internet, those on the Facebook, YouTube and all the rest and all the other platform that you are watching us from and the, onto the congregation. What eyes saw the tree? Bible says that if saw the tree, it was pleasant to the eyes. And after eating with her husband, their eyes were open. What eyes saw the tree? And what eyes were open? Oh, somebody here with me. They were using their spiritual eyes. After eating the fruit, God told them that the day that you eat this fruit, they will die. But immediately they did not die. What died within them? They lost their spiritual estate. They lost their state whereby they can communicate and understand and discern and know the things of God. That ability was lost in the garden. And the Bible said they sew a fig tree as a covering. Thank God that he came and killed a lamb for them. To cover them with a lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Because when God killed the lamb, now, at the same Adam and Eve that were running away, they were able to come to God on temporary basis. 
But God wants to change that on permanent basis. God wants you to come to him as it was before the sin came in. That's why Jesus came. The sin was just disobedient. That was blocking us. Having access to God. We lost something. Though they disobey, but they lost something. They lost their spiritual sight. Their eyes was open and they saw that they were naked. That's why you and I, we are so consumed of nakedness of our life. I don't have the fridge. I don't have the car. I don't have this shoe. My head is not this way. I'm not, hearing, I'm not wearing this earring. I'm not painting my face this way. It's all as a result that you have lost your spiritual state. Bible says, when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them the first covenant. Do this, multiply, fill the earth. And they lost that spiritual state. So let's hear what the Bible is saying concerning the new covenant. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of a new covenant. Our covenant is not based on Adam. Is based on a new covenant enacted by Jesus Christ. We are no more using Adamic covenant. We are using the covenant that is enacted after the death of Christ. Not of the letter, that is the law, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Beloved, hear me and hear me well. If your faith is just based on the letter, which is the law, you will die. Because it's natural, it's fleshly, it's carnal. You are going to die. The day God will assemble his people to give them the right to assess his kingdom, you are not going to get it there. Remember John 4, 23, 24. God is what? Spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why the same writer saying that, teach me your way so that I can walk in your truth. Not the truth of your forefathers, not the truth of the worldly mentality, but the truths of God. And you went further, unite my heart that I may fear your name. The Bible says, the letter kills. But the spirit give us life. What change? Like I said, when our eyes was open, we lost our spiritual state. And our, our natural state became dominant in us. So we lost our contact with God. That ability to obey God. That desire to follow the will of God. That reverence to the things of God. We lost it. Why do we lose it? Because we have lost our spiritual state. It's only when you are in the spiritual state that you are able to assess the things of God. Bible says your God has blessed you with all spiritual things. Not all physical things. But in the realm of the spirit, everything has been granted. But the truth is, we are not able to assess them. The knowledge of God is in the realm of the spirit. It's not in the physical. It's not those who have masquerading or oh, daughter this and daughter this that have the knowledge of God. It's not those who are coming with a PAD. What they learn is just history. And what history have they learned? They have not learned nothing about God. You are going to go to heaven and you're going to spare eternity to know about 10% of God. Oh, my mama, you didn't hear me. You are going to spend what? Eternity. You won't even know 50% of God. You're going to know just about 10% of God. He's too deep. He's beyond. He has already told us in Isaiah 55, my ways and your ways are different. Those of you who have had privilege of being catapulted into the realm of the spirit, you realize that things get downloaded to you. When you are in the realm of the spirit, we don't study like you go to classroom here. The thing that you don't know, by the time you think about them, is already dwelling within you. You get to know them just like that. 
is downloaded to you just quick it's faster than any internet speed you have on this earth you ask a question within you and the question is answered instantly within the twinkle of an eye the lord answer you so it's nothing compared to the system that we are operating for we need to be in the spirit to understand the god who bible declared the deep colored unto what the deep iron did what sharpen that iron if you are not deep you cannot do, you cannot know the deep things of god you will dwell only on john 3 16 even that one you cannot even quote it the writer said unite my heart he was indicating a division anytime somebody bring the word unity then there is a problem that we are seeing there is what a division so what division is the writer talking about we are now moved to the canal realm our spirit man we have separated from who we really are so jesus came to unite the fleshly and the spiritual for it to become what one so that you can walk and fear the name of god oh tell god thank you lord jesus amen he came to revive you he came to quicken you he came to strengthen you so that you are spirit man that can assess the things of god can be revived without your spirit man you will not know the things of god you all that you care is Facebook and you are standing there doing all these things. Why so perishing? You don't understand because your spirit man is what? Dead. If your spirit man is alive unto God, it's a totally different ballgame. The world will see you crazy. The world will see you ununderstandable because you are using a different operating system, not the worldly system. Whereby you compromise concerning everything and you call yourself a child of God. First Corinthians chapter 15, 45 to 47. So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. There's something called the last Adam who is coming to face out the Adamic nature, that sin nature, that body of sin that have been dominating you and I. Bible call him the first Adam. And the last Adam, whenever we say something is last, it means that a new program, when they make cars, oh, this model, this is the last model. It means that they are not going to what? Remake that car again. It's been what? Fade out. So Adamic nature. God has faced it out. So when you are a child of God, you need to be in Christ, not in Adam. And you just don't walk to Christ. There is a process that will catapult you, that will transform you, that will initiate you into the nature of Christ. Many of us, because we have been told, if you believe in him, you will be saved. Do you really believe in Jesus? Like I've explained last Sunday in this week. Belief system is not just math. It's what you have installed. Or the story, the thing that is in your story, which is your heart. By the way, last week I told you that the heart has dual functionality. Right now, as I'm standing here, my physical heart pump only blood but god is not talking about your physical heart he's talking about the spiritual heart which you have lost and i have lost our spiritual state we have a heart and from there that's why he said guide your heart with what with all diligence out of it flows the issues of life that's why proverbs 18 21 says that life and death is in the power of your tongue and if you love it, if you love the worldly system, you get its fruit. 
If you love godly system, you get it through. Beloved, our heart, the spiritual heart, is like a land that you can sow on. Every word that you keep or you store or you install in your heart, it bears fruit. So those of you, the young folks, forget it. They don't know what is called farming. Amen. They have not worked. When you ask my brother-in-law, we used to go to the bush to cut trees. And we are being bit, bitten by the bees and all that. Just God just saved us with a lot of snakes that were attacking us here and there. When you plant a mango, can you reap orange? It's not possible. So whatever that you are installing in your heart, you are going to what? Reap. So Galatians 6, 7 tells that God is not what? Mock. Whatsoever that you sow, you will reap. But you are not sowing anything. The words that are coming out of your mouth, your belief system, is how you sow. You are sowing in your heart. Whatever word that God has declared, if you go against it, you are sowing against God's will. It got nothing to do with modernization. It got nothing to do that we are in new age. God is forever. Like I told you, he's called the ancient of what? Days. He changes not. Don't joke with him. Bible says, the last Adam was made a quickness. How be? That was not a fair, which is spiritual. But that which is natural. After that, which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth. Healthy. And the second man is the Lord from heaven. Hosea chapter 6, he gave us a mystery. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. This man of God gave you and I a mystery. And I want to quickly bring it to attention. Come, let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. The Lord, in the garden when we sinned, he drove us out. The Bible says, come, let us return to him. He has torn, but he will heal you. So Jesus coming, that say, he said, come unto me. All that I have a lady, and I will give you what? Rest. He did turn us, he did cast us away. But he wants us to return back. The only reason why he did not allow us to stay in the garden is because of that sin nature. If we have stayed there, we will have continued in sin and challenge God forever. So God wanted to solve that problem. Remove it away so that he can restore you and keep you back in the garden. For he has torn, but he will heal. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. That's why I let you recite it. His resurrection gave me what? A new life. Bible says after two days, he will revive. On the third day, he will raise us up. Do you know what it means? Christ spent three days in the grave of oh, my labor seeker. And the Bible is giving you, this was prophesied by Hosea before Christ came. That when he come, there will be a three days work when you go to the grave. By the way, that Jesus died, that Christ did not die. I don't have time to give you that revelation. But as time goes on, we will teach you one of these days. That it was Jesus that died. But Christ did not die. Oh, hallelujah. It's a very deep revelation. We will explain one day. So, what you need to understand. Bible says, after two days, she will revive us. On the third day that he resurrected, he raised you up. Because he was what? The last Adam. So, anybody from that time who accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior, you will be transformed into the body of Christ. And he went further. Let us know and let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter rain and the former rain to the earth. What is Isaiah saying? He said that when he revives us and you pursue the knowledge of God, you will understand that you are spirit being. Then the Lord will come upon you that you will be born again. Oh, my, 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 my. 
as a latter and the former rain. It's about the Holy Spirit he's talking about. Many of us, we don't desire the knowledge of God no more. Bible says he will come back to us as the latter and the former rain. So the Holy Spirit that we have, we have the full package. He used to come on Elijah. He used to come on Moses. But now, we have the, the latter and the former combined. So we have the full measurement of the Holy Spirit. If you are born again. Why born again? It's very imperative and it's, it's, it's serial that you need to understand. That born again is not a joke. In Adam, you are dead. You need to be alive in Christ. So you need to be born again. I will continue noisy, but I want to give you this because I can't finish this message because of time. John 3 verse 3 to 6 Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very I say unto thee, except, shall we all say except? Except, in other words, there is no corner corner, there is no cutthroat, there is no bribery, there is no other way except Except, shall we all say except again? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. He said, except you are born again. All these things that I'm talking about will look stupidness to you. It will look foolishness. Except a man be born again, you cannot even see the kingdom, let alone to enter. Please, I want you to understand this very carefully. Because he's going to explain the born again. This is the statement of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the one who told us that God is a spirit. You cannot worship him in the natural realm. You need to worship him in spirit. Not just in spirit, but in his truth. Unless you worship him in spirit and in truth, you will never, because it means that God's way, my ways are not your way. God have a way, and that is his truth. That's why Jesus Christ in John chapter 17, when he was praying, he said, that word is what? Truth. That's why the Bible says, buy the truth and do what? Sell it not. Some of us, we bought the truth and we have sold it to go for modernization. We have sold it for our culture. We have sold it for our own evil, evil desires. Christ said, except one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. And Nicodemus asked this question for you and I. Do you mean I should go back to my mother's womb to be born again? And Christ is going to break it down. And I pray that your eyes should be open to this nugget of truth so that you can walk in the spiritual things of God. As long as you remain like this, you are no match for the devil. Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power when the spirit of God come upon you. Without that power, you are no match for the devil. Oh, let me tell you, God is a spirit Satan is a spirit. Angels are spirit. Demons are spirit. Principalities are spirit. Spiritual wickedness are spirit. You cannot contend with any one of them unless you are in the realm of the spirit. Not just this mouth. You need to be born again. Should I enter back into my mother's womb at this old age? Can he enter the second time into his mother womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Please, I want you to hear me and hear me well. He except you are born of that water baptism. Except you are born of that Holy Ghost baptism. You don't have no business entering the kingdom of God. I believe that you believe that Jesus Christ came and saved you, right? I believe everybody, every child of God, know that Jesus came and saved us. But this is what he is saying, that except you are born of the water and the spirit, you have no business of entering his kingdom. Do you believe that? We have thrown this system away and we are masquerading with our own system. Somebody have told you, as long as you believe in Jesus Christ, you're okay. But Jesus never taught you that. He was talking to Nicodemus, a Pharisee who knows the law. 
He came to Jesus. Like many of us have come to Jesus. Oh, you are a great man. You are able to heal the sick. Touch me. Heal me. Oh, the presence of God. Jesus says, stop that nonsense. Except you are born again. You cannot enter into that kingdom. And he went further and says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Beloved, if you just maintain your Adamic nature, you are just flesh. But if you follow Jesus' teachings, like Hosea prophesied, if we pursue the knowledge of God on a Thursday, he will, he will raise us up. If you pursue that knowledge and be born of the Spirit, you become a spiritual being. We are using the tongue speaking. Devil is using that as negativity for you not to know the importance of being born again into the realm of the spirit. Anything that devil speak against, it will affect his kingdom. He doesn't want you to have it. Anything devil concentrate on. He knows and he knows it will affect his kingdom. He knows that when you are born again into the realm of the spirit, he can have no control over you again. He can have no power over you again. Therefore, he coerce and condone you to connive with you so that you will reject the very word of God. The very person who came and died for you. He said, except you are born of the water and the spirit, you have no business entering his kingdom. And we are throwing that away. Let me say this and we'll continue next week. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hosea told us, that you come back to us as the latter and the former reign. And the Bible is telling you that the Lord, Jesus Christ, your Savior, the Holy Spirit, that's, they, are, they are influencing you to reject. It is the same, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I didn't write the Bible. God wrote it for us. Man, grace, is to look into the word of God and be able to know the truth. Bible says the Lord is that spirit. I didn't write it. You can say all that you want to say that oh, Jesus is separate, Holy Spirit is separate. But the Bible says that the Lord is that spirit. He make it emphatically clear that the Lord is that spirit. And he went further. The reason why you are not liberated you can proclaim that you are a child of God, sanctified. Oh, and some of them will jump. Holy, I'm sanctified. It's not about God you make. He says, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh. So you are not liberated yet. Because it's when you enter into the garden that your liberation starts. And that's why Christ came. In the garden, we have access to God. Outside the garden, that is the kingdom of God. It's in the garden. The outside is not the kingdom of God. This is called the raw material state. Where we were taken from. God prepared a place for you. That you shall be with him. But you cannot go there. Except you are born of the water and of the spirit. God bless you. Next week we will continue. Amen.